Oh, <laughs> All right, guys, the only way to get Brayden Miracle to stop eating an apple is to start the video. So we spent the last 10 minutes trying Most to decide things. what we should talk about. Like I have a dent in my head. And the girls have had our... Uh... My hair is long right now. <laughs> I got a dent in my head. Uh, all right, guys. So it's Saturday. It's like, I don't know, it feels like midnight. I think it's 6 o'clock. So uh, we, we have... Party in this house. <laughs> Saturdays, I feel like, should be lighter, so instead of, we have a lot of actual serious things we could talk about and things that have sort of come up for us today, but we didn't feel like that was the right topic for today. So, uh, I think we're gonna gotta tell you guys a little bit, a lot of you don't know us, so you've been jumping on, maybe you hear us say, hey, we're Brandon and Courtney Miracle. Is that you, Rosie? So, if you're on and you have a random question for us or something you've always wanted to ask us, ask away. Yeah. Who is Rosie? What's a, what's a random um, question you'd like to ask? Random questions. So if you have a question, hi, Jess, how are you? Uh, we've been harassing your brother. So, um, if you guys have a random question you want to ask us, something you want to know about us personally, something you want to know about life, whatever you want to know, fire away and we'll answer it. Otherwise, I think we're going to ask each other random questions. We have a book that says 3,000 questions, but I don't know if we're going to go there. So, um, all right. So, my question for you, what's been your favorite part of quarantine? My favorite part of quarantine? <laughs> um... Maybe pivoting. But I would say probably obviously more time with the, the girls and you um, being able to do that. Except for it's put a lot more hats. Well, not that we don't wear a lot of hats anyway, but uh, put a lot more responsibility, especially being able to see what Carson um, has to learn on a day-to-day -day basis has been kind of a, a new endeavor. But at the same time, being able to sit down and see her growth over the last you know year, you know, for... Uh, those that don't know me very well, you know, you may have heard me talk about when we talk about stories. Um, I had, when I was growing up, I had a very big phobia Abby. of, of learning, right? Like I had a very big phobia of reading out loud and being that kid in class that would like tremble to go to class and like would beg my mom to like talk to the teachers so I didn't have to read out loud in class and everything else. And our daughter started off the school year um, in that same thing. Like she's in first grade, but she was in that same realm of, I don't want, I feel like I'm stupid. I don't want to read in front of the class. I don't think I can read and I don't want to get made fun of. And so honestly, it's been really cool to be able to sit down with her and uh, watch her read and do her homework and do that kind of stuff and feel confident, right? Like and be able to go to bed and have her read a book and read a story has been really cool just to her like, yeah, let's read a book and like fly through it. And obviously like she reads, um, like she's still in first grade, but like to be able to have that confidence in like, yeah, let's go do that. I'll read this to you real quick and then we can go do our thing. Where before she was like, no, I don't want to do that at all. And that was something I could relate with for a long, long time um, of just that, that uncertain feeling going through. So I think that that's probably been kind of cool. Yeah. So if you guys are just jumping on, we're doing a ask us anything question. Otherwise, we're asking each other questions. We have a random book we might come off of. So if you have questions, you want to know anything about us, about anything we talk about, drop it here and we will answer it. Um, what has been your biggest obstacle during the quarantine? Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, in all seriously, you guys, I think there's been a lot of things about quarantine that have been um, really good. Um, and uh, we often talk about like the things that we avoid in life. And one of the things that I have avoided for 10 years is actually like getting an accountant and like staying up to date with the books at the gym. Like I always know what's going on, but I don't ever have it in like a pretty little package that I could give somebody a P and L at any time. Well, happy to Don't say, sell yourself short. You're pretty little happy <laughs> to say that I got it all done. I got QuickBooks, um, but it's been a lot of numbers are not my jam. I don't love them. Um, I went to a conference. You're number one. I went to a conference years ago. Um, my my past life, my family and I owned a. Well, they owned it. I worked there. Um, it's no real business and. Uh, we joked because I was totally the people person. Like I was all about helping the people and selling and that was my jam and my sister was all about numbers and went to a conference together and the first couple of days was all about relationships and how you how you work with people and I loved it. And then like the next day they legit were like, okay, well if you have 2.2 .2 million and they carry the five and I was like, nothing. And she was like, oh, this is awesome. So um, yeah, hi Tula. So for me, it is definitely the biggest obstacle has been dealing with all the financials but our taxes are done and uh all is good hi jared i was talking about you today all right um i got one for you let's see um what upcoming life event are you most excited about when i feel like you were going to choose that one because <laughs> you know life me really well. event 
Well, for us, is even a life event. The end of the pandemic. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing we're all thinking about, uh, right? Say, when this thing is going to be over, right? Like, and it will be over, right? I think that's the <laughs> one thing for, I've seen a lot of people that are really starting to feel the sense of what's going on is like, this is my new norm. This is what life is going to be forever. And it's like, this is what life is currently. Right, and I and trust me, I get into those senses because you know, like my mom came over, Courtney's parents came over, and we had to like wave and say hi through the glass and do all that kind of stuff, and that sucked, right? Like that that was really no fun and doing all those kind of things. But at the same time, like uh, you can get into that real right. sense, real real easy if it's like this is going to be my life and this is going to be our new norm. And it's like, well, are there certain things right. that well, will, the new will, 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 will come out of it? Yeah, but at the same time, you guys, history. History has always been like this. There has always been something in human evolution that has just come about for us to have to evolve and work around. So I think for the life event is, uh, you know, us getting back to some sort of normalcy. Um, it's it's not going to be under the timetable, probably what we're hoping for. Um, but at the same time, you know, like to me, that's no different than what we talk about with our clients every single time, right? With every person that probably we've ever talked to on a realistic uh, scale as far as achievement is us as human beings, our expectations oftentimes don't align up with reality. And so oftentimes we expect more than what we can actually receive and what is realistic. And so I think with a lot of this, you guys, is just the next big event for us is, you know, what's what's on the other side of this of just getting into some sort of normal um, function on a day-to-day -day basis of what it once upon a time was close to being. Being open to celebrate the gym's 10 year anniversary. Oh, yeah, so May 22nd. One. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's I'll good just give one. him the answers. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we do that live. All right guys, if you have questions for us, drop them here, we'll answer them. We're pretty much open books. The new normal, what will it be? We don't know, right? That's what's kind of fun, is we get to create our new normal. Hmm. <laughs> what dance moves or dance have you mastered? <laughs> So Brandon makes fun of me because I want to dance. He actually bought me dance lessons for Christmas. We have not done them. No. I have not mastered any dance yes. moves. No, no, none. Like that's <laughs> it's one thing that on a uh, relationship goal-wise we were planning on doing is, is taking dance lessons. He's together. really good at dancing and I'm not. I only dance if I've been drinking. And then I think I'm a good dancer, but it's probably just that I don't care. <laughs> what still amazes you? What still amazes me? What still me? amazes you? Hmm. What still amazes me? The, the, yeah, Veronica, you can go up teach that dance. What still amazes me? I think what still amazes me is how little I know. <laughs> like every, this will be honest with you, the more that we have grown and learned and, and just kind of dived into just education and personal development and knowing myself, like, I feel like the more I learn, the less I actually think that I know. And I just think it's amazing how much there is to discover about yourself and about your relationships and about like life and what's going on. So I think that pretty much amazes me every day. Have a day comes. No, like that question. All right. I'll ask you what moment <laughs> <laughs> he's picking his own question. Yeah. What moment from your life would make a good love song? So yet again, kind of diving into my past on this. Uh, I hope I'm in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, go too far back. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I was fortunate enough to be in a relationship when I was like 15 all the way through I was 23. And so, <laughs> so I got to experience a lot, but I also didn't get to experience a lot. And so, you know, I got to, I got to be in a, you know, heartfelt, loved relationship. I had my sweetheart and all that stuff through college and everything else. And that relationship ended. And when that ended, um, it was in a very turmoil time in my life where I lost a lot of my sense of who I was. I lost my identity. I lost that relationship. You know, a lot of being from 15 to 23, a lot of who I developed as a person um, relied a lot around us being that couple. Um, you know, I was no longer playing football in college. So that also took a hit on my identity as far as being an athlete, being all these kind of things, you know, and just, you know, it turned into me just working through jobs and doing all this stuff. And, um, you know, there was a long time after that, that it was, um, there was such heartfelt, just, just despair from that thing ending that, like a country song too, that it, uh, <laughs> 
it, 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 like it tore me up that I vowed like, okay, maybe I will never be in a long-term relationship again. Right. Like I, you know, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll have connection, but I won't have love. I won't have those kind of things, you know? And then, um, you know, unexpectedly, you know, once you kind of discover and find out that you're okay on like, as you, as a person that you can actually be okay on your own because you appreciate who you are and you're appreciating who you are as a person, all of a sudden I got to, I was working at Mountainside Fitness and I was, it was, I just got done training a client and I actually ran up to the front desk and checked in this one. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I would say unexpectedly that we went, we ended up going out and everything just seemed to be honest. Click. I stalked him. I made yeah. him show up at a bar and, uh, that was sort of the, the well, it was one of those things like <laughs> It's just, it was super easy, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was super easy. And I think at that point in my life that it was um, in your mid and younger mid twenties, right? Like you're going out, you're enjoying yourself and everything else and every relationship is fun, but then there's always some sense of drama. And usually I didn't deal with drama whatsoever. So my relationship didn't very really last very long. And then all of a sudden we went out and everything seemed to just kind of be smooth, right? It was smooth. We were on the same page. We were going in the same direction. We understood each other without even really understanding each other very well. And it was, it was just smooth. So I think, uh, you know, I think a country song probably would fall along with that. Um, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, I wouldn't put like some sappy <laughs> boy band or something like that. But, but, uh, <clears throat> But I think going through all that, I think would, uh, you know, make a, they don't make music videos anymore, but I think if they did make music videos, it would, it might be actually a pretty good, might be like a Tim McGraw song or something like that. There you go. So we're going to talk about relationships next week. This is a pretty good lead into it, but yeah, we'll, we'll tell you guys our story, but, um, the, so the funniest part about that, you guys was, if you know me now, I still like really baggy clothes, like baggy sweats. I had on sweats that were way too big. I had a bandana on my head because I had really, really short hair. And for the next, like, two weeks, I referred to him as the hot trainer um, because the day he checked me in, his eyes were, like, crazy blue. So, and I did stalk him, by the way. Um, I know the answer to that. I can tell you my country song super fast. So, I also was in a young love relationship. I was married for four years, and then um, we got divorced. It was, it was my decision. It was just too young. We got married. He's a great guy. All that's fine, but... Um, we broke up and I literally got a jacked up truck, bought a dog and got a snowmobile. And I was like, I am for sure a country song. Okay. Um, what is the most bizarre thing you've ever Googled? I don't like that one. Pangolin. Pangolin? <laughs> we Googled a couple years ago what a pangolin was. And then now ironically it's in the book that we read the girls. So if you don't know what a pangolin is, it's an animal. It looks The like... sad thing is supposedly that's what started this whole thing. Well, supposedly. It was the initial like phase that yeah. people were eating pangolins and doing those kind of things. So that's kind of ironic. We it's Googled fun. it like two years ago. Uh, you're not easily offended. <laughs> what was the most outside the box idea you ever had? Starting business when we've known each other for four months. <laughs> That's a true. Yeah. That's another true story. Going down that rabbit hole. We'll talk about that week, next yeah. week too. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> I should go through this book yeah. to teach you guys about relationships. All right. Uh, was that your question? Sure. Uh, what news? Oh, this is a good one. This could spark drama. What news or media outlet do you trust? <laughs> <laughs> If you guys don't know what we're doing, we're reading out of yeah. this book. So it's uh, 3,000 questions about me. All right, what uh, news station or outlet do you trust? What media station do you trust? <laughs> do I trust? <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm None. not one for conspiracies, but I think <laughs> I think we put a lot of weight on, the, on our uh, social outlets and our media as in general, just because if you probably dig through a little bit deeper and find out who's on the other end of the paychecks, they tend to skew the stories depending on who's uh, behind that. So newsworthy, I would, you know, I tend to try to get my sources from a variety of places, but I tend to look for people that I know specifically and that tend to have PhDs and stuff that, that I know about. And so, yeah. Well, this is a good one. I'm gonna I'm gonna save this one. Oh, it's your turn. Oh, oh yeah. should I ask you again? Sure, you found one. I didn't All right, it. at this particular moment, who do you miss the most right now? Hmm. I would say obviously my family, but I think that's probably a big one for most of us going through this right now. Is uh, you know, I think we've been on the same sense of from the beginning of this. The biggest thing that's gonna I think influence most of us through all this time <laughs> is. Um, 
is connection and love and community and all those things. And, you know, seeing my mom today was great, but you know, it does suck not being able to hug your parents, not being like having your mom and dad come over and like literally slide stuff under as if we're on like the prison, prison yeah. right? Like, sure like that part kind of sucks. So I'd say, you know, being able to, I mean, I miss my parents. I miss my family. You know, just being able to actually interact. I am fortunate, though, that we do have these devices that we were able to have FaceTimes, have Zooms, right? Like, I just got a Zoom call with my buddies that, you know, like, I've known since I was five years old. Um, you know, like, it's it's that group of people that you get with and you are you pick things up just as if you never left off. And, you know, up until the last, like, two weeks, we've never, we hadn't even, like, we hadn't been together in, like, a year and a half, um, you know, and... Well, a since year. Cody's Last wedding, July. right? So, so maybe a year, but, um, you know, but being able to connect and do those kind of things has been awesome. But I would definitely say uh, family. Family's a big one. Okay. Oh, you? Yeah, yeah, same. I mean, we were talking this morning. Um, I led a breathwork class and I was like, I'm so ready for the gym to open. But even when it opens, like we're not going to be able to like give people hugs or any of that stuff. So I missed that. Hmm. Are you more of a homebody or a person out about town? <laughs> That's probably changed. We were talking about this the other yeah. day that like we are so busy, like most of you, right? You have kids, you have families, you have all this stuff. And so it was like, we would say like on Sundays, God, I just don't want to do anything, right? And now that we don't have all those places to be, now I'm really starting to appreciate the fact that we had to do all those things. Uh-oh. <laughs> he asked me, would you ever live in a tree house? Um, if the treehouse builder guy on TV built me one, heck yeah, I would. I would build like an awesome like zen breathwork yoga studio like escape area. Heck yeah, I would build the treehouse. Yeah, if you guys haven't watched like <laughs> treehouse builders, like totally check that out. That's one thing I could dig in on. That guy's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, except for we made the mistake of watching it with our girls, and we have we have a couple trees in the backyard, but I don't think they would hold up like their an actual tree kitty house. house let alone like an entire tree house so like yeah i could i could dig up on yeah, some tree houses that's, a, that's on the to-do list in life what's harder to do than it was yesterday <laughs> <laughs> go to the grocery store <laughs> that's much harder than it was uh yeah there's a lot of things but no seriously it's weird going to the grocery store but all right let's ask you one i'm just gonna i'm just gonna like randomly go um so much for random. Right. Okay. <laughs> what are your bad habits? My bad habits? I don't think I have any bad habits. According to you, I chew my nail. I knew that was good. <laughs> According to Courtney, I chew my nails, and that's not a bit good. Just so you know, Courtney's pet peeve is like chewing her nail, like chewing nails. It's so and, disgusting. But, you guys, you'll <laughs> die of coronavirus. Especially now, that, that was even before Corona came that's through. That's just but gross. Like, but yeah, raise like, your hand. My nurses, Veronica Tula. <laughs> it is disgusting. <laughs> um. What would my bad habits be? I think I love my habits. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. There are no bad habits. Um, probably procrastinating. Obviously, that's a procrastinating thing. Staying up too late. Staying, I'm staying up too late. For literally 10 years, I've been telling myself that I'm going to go to bed earlier because <laughs> I think with all, with out failed, the biggest thing that we try to get with all of our clients is to get more sleep. And it's definitely one of those like, do as I say, not as I do type of things because, you know, like my story for uh, being at night is I'm a night owl, right? Like I wake up at three o'clock and I still, the nine o'clock hits and I'm like, sweet, let's get to work, right? And, you know, that's one thing that I would definitely say is a habit that does not serve me. Yeah. That's a good one. Scariest moment of your life. <sighs> oh, that's a good one. All right. Scariest moment of my life. Um... I think I have two. Like I had two that were my choice, but they were still super scary. So left my first marriage when I was 27, 28. Legit had my car in the back of my truck, didn't know where it was going. Um, my best friend lived downtown and I went down to stay with her and I was not, I was not a downtown Denver person and it was sketchy. So just knowing that I didn't know what was gonna happen in my life was super scary. Same kind of thing. I left my parents' business Legit, that was the weirdest feeling of my life. And scary but cool at the same time was I, I left and I called a buddy and I was like, I just I just I just quit. I just left and uh and he's like, What are you gonna do now? And I was like, I have no idea and that was that was probably one of the last times I really actually like worked a nine to five job. 
Um, but that was really scary because I had no plan. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I always say the scariest decisions are the best ones. I've never had any like, like near death experiences. So the scary stuff is what I've created for myself. I'm like drawing a blank on that. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I would obviously say opening up a business, right? Mm-hmm. Like I would say opening a business and doing that and basically like quitting our jobs and like quitting our security, right? Like, Go all in. like, yeah, quitting our jobs and be like, sweet, let's do this. And nobody knows who we are and we're going to try to do this. I would say that would probably be my most like life scariest moment. Um, you know, I mean, obviously roller coasters, all those kind of things is obviously a fun, exciting, scary, but I'd say like life size scary. I would say probably opening a business without like any parachute to catch you. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's your favorite thing about nature? Snow. (laughs) Um, yeah, for me it's definitely snow. Like, snow is, snow represents freedom to me because snow represents snowmobiling, which was always the, like, the freedom and the flow and the, like, zen of my life. So I think the coolest thing about nature is that it can dump 12 feet of snow or 12 inches of snow, four feet of snow, whatever, um, and just completely change its landscape. So, mountains. Mountains for sure. What would be your dream car? Well, I know the answer to this one. Ooh, a dream car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is like inner child coming up. So, uh, mine would definitely be a 1967 uh, Shelby GT500. Yeah. If you've ever watched Gone in 60 Seconds, the last car that Nicolas Cage takes off in, yeah, that's my ride. That'd be right. my ride. There you go. What's, uh, this is a fun one. What's your favorite item of clothing that get, begins with the letter B? Pajamas? B. Oh. <laughs> Pajamas? <laughs> begins with the letter B? Yeah. Your bra. Oh, seriously. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right, we might be done. <laughs> we might actually be done. I don't know, but do I have anything with a B? Baggy pants? I don't know. What starts with a B, you guys? Um. <laughs> yeah. Is there any clothing that starts with a B? Button up shirt. He doesn't like button up shirts. All right, that's funny you go. <laughs> Tell that's us, you guys, you what starts with a B? Uh... <laughs> what does your communication style say about you? <laughs> that is a good one. Oh, let's see. Well, my communication style is pretty much say it like it is. So I think that uh, that that says about me that you get what you get. And that, that hasn't always been that way, you guys. I'll be honest. Like, obviously, as you get older, and not that I think that I'm old, but... The older I got, the more I was like, I'm going to just be who I am. I'm going to show up who I am. I'm going to say what I think. Like, not that I'm just like no filter, but very often back in the day, Brandon Brandon would be like, think before you talk. And I was like, I am. I know what the ramifications are going to be and I'm okay with it. But the funny part, so that's probably when I was like 34, 35 and he was well, he's seven years younger. So however old he was, then I don't do math. And then the older he's gotten, the more that communication style has changed. So um, yeah, you, you will never wonder what you're going to get from me or if I'm not telling you what I really think. I think it means I'm honest or bitchy. I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't say bitchy. Sometimes. <laughs> um, what, ooh, this is a good one for Brandon. What aroma or smells make you feel alive? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, white tea, <laughs> white tea. What's the hotel? Mm. The Marriott. What? Well, Weston's. It's, it's Weston's. The Marriott. Is it the West- Marriott gets it. Is it the, Weston by Marriott? No, I think it's the Weston's. Is it? Aren't they by Whatever Marriott? Whatever it is, <laughs> they, they pump white tea off. It's the. It's off of what is it? By the Promenade movie theaters, uh, right? Is that the one? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They pump white tea through like the vents. If you haven't gone there, you guys, it's awesome. It's brilliant. Like, it's like happy smell. Yes. And white tea is really hard to find. So we were yes. at Shields for Christmas and we actually found white tea candles and he was like literally a kid in a candy shop. So if you ever uh, want to buy Brandon a present, white tea candles or white tea anything. Yeah. It's one of the like, they always say scent has like the strongest like remember. Visceral, yeah. Like yeah. that like for whatever reason is like this is great so, okay yes. so here's where we we play the masculine and feminine that's brandon's favorite smell my favorite smell is two stroke like still to this day <laughs> my favorite uh, I think smell we just flip the tables on our relationship real bad here. it's two stroke engine yeah. that goes back to snowmobiling if you want to make me happy just send me some two stroke <laughs>
I think that was, have you ever hurt somebody on purpose? I think you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever hurt somebody on purpose? Well, I'm sure I did at some point in my life. But I can't think of one. I try not to hurt people. What is best learning as you go? Isn't that kind of everything? Life. <laughs> life. <laughs> the best everything? way to learn is as you go in life. Don't Just don't think you know everything. Ooh, this good one. If you could instill one piece of advice in a baby's mind, what advice would you give it? Oh, I know my answer. I'm going to answer this one too. Live your life for you. Yeah. Mine would be you're worthy. Right? Like, as we talk to more and more people, everybody has this tendency that somewhere in life, like, when you were born, you knew you were perfect, you knew you were worthy, and then life happens, and, and then we forget that, and then we figure out how to come back to it. So, like, getting them to believe, like, no matter what, no matter what life throws at them, they're always worthy, and they're always love. That was stupid. Uh, what's the first thing you notice about other people? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this one. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ask you without the, without the video. All right, so I would ask Brandon this one: What's the best thing about being your gender? <laughs> All right, so if you don't know Brandon, uh, you guys can Google this. You've probably seen it, but there's the meme of the little elephant with its tail and its it's its, it's, 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 it's a tusk. It's not its tusk. It's his tusk. The tusk is the thing that comes out from their face. <laughs> Okay. It's a tusk. It's an elephant tusk. <laughs> it's, it's swinging it, and the caption is what women would do if they were a boy for the day. <laughs> and it makes, if you've never seen Brandon, like, really laugh, this is it. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to get to this, you guys, but, like, it's your trunk. It's a trunk, it's not a, a tusk. It's a trunk. It's a tusk. The white thing. Oh, that's the... Thank you, Amanda. Oh, <laughs> we haven't even been drinking. <laughs> yeah, he flips it all around. <laughs> Go watch that video, seriously. Uh, White tea in that video, like, Brandon could be in the worst mood ever, and he will die laughing. He doesn't even have enough to see it. Like, so Brandon has a laugh, and then he has this laugh. It's the best thing ever. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, what else? Um, mm. Are you good ask? What gives you chills every time? Hmm. I think um, babies being born, right? Like just remembering the feeling of like what it was like when you're when you're when the, our daughters were placed on my chest, and so seeing videos or hearing people talk about labor and birth, like I'm pretty sure it gives me chills every time, in a good way. Ooh, what TV show really annoys you? What's one of the girls' ones? Like, all we watch anymore is like <laughs> Disney and. Oh, probably one That's of That's not true. They've been watching Troll Hunters and, yeah. Non animated. Oh, um, yeah. What's the one that, like, the little. Um, they dress up. What the hell is the name of it? One of the, one of the ones that the kids watch of the. It's like the LOL one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't okay. know the name of it. All right. Um, what's your favorite thing to do at the beach? Hmm, depends on the day. So I'd love to learn how to surf. I don't know how to surf yet, but uh, usually just laying in, it depends on where we are. So when we were in Jamaica on our honeymoon, um, that was like the vacation where we just did nothing. Like it was the perfect honeymoon ever. And I was laying in the water because like Jamaica is just warm and like there's no waves. And so I was laying there like half in the water, half out. It was the best ever. Um, if I knew how to do breath work back then, I would have done that. But the, the Jamaican uh, people that were working there, Came up to Brandon, who was on a chair, and they're like, is she okay? Is, is, does she need anything? He's like, yeah, she's dead. I've just left her there. Yeah, yeah. they were, like, kind of dumbfounded. Because everyone <laughs> else brought, obviously, their chair out into the water. And she just, like, flopped into the water and was, like, <laughs> done. Yeah, and, was, yeah, they, cool. they didn't, despite how many people I can imagine visit the, visited the resort, like, they apparently never saw that one before. Yeah, that was pretty funny. All right, let's do a couple more. I don't know how long we've been on yeah. here. Uh, how fast can you run? Depends on what I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like them to tell them about your record? From Little? I want to see. If they, oh, if anyone has any ties to Little <laughs> Elementary, I would like to know little. if my record still stands. <laughs> still, I still want to know if my half mile record still stands from fifth grade. So how fast did you run? Uh, 244. I don't even know that I can run that now, you guys. That's pretty impressive. 
I just had one. Oh, you did. Who can you be yourself around? Hopefully me. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not him. Everyone. Learned that over time. Oh, I had it. All right, we're going to find one more, you guys. One oh, more. do you think uh, parenting classes should be mandatory for all parents? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know my take and I, we are not perfect parents by any means um but I know when we had our kids I read some books and they stressed me out big time because I'm more of an intuitive person and I didn't know that back then but I was like my intuition tells me what my kid needs and this is what I'm gonna do um parenting books for me would have not been a good choice there's other people that do it that love it it's awesome um but I think it should be your choice because they just stressed me out all right, what's your favorite aisle in the supermarket? And then we got crying kids, we gotta run. You guys, this has been fun. Favorite aisle? Live by trying to stay out of the aisles. <laughs> um, I would say ice cream. Mm -hmm. I would say the, uh, the aisle we tend to go to if we're gonna go to an uh, aisle would be visiting the ice cream aisle just because if I'm going for dessert, ice cream is my way to go. Yeah, I agree. And Saturday, we should be having ice cream. All right, guys, this was fun. Hopefully, you got to know us a little bit better. Um, we've been on, this is episode like 33. So we'll be back tomorrow with a little more uh, education, a little more knowledge. But um, I know there's a lot of new people watching these videos. So we thought it'd be kind of fun just to just to tell you guys a little bit about us. Kids are going to run in. Yeah. We're going to go. Bye, guys. Bye, <laughs>